This is Mrs. O'Neill for Chapter 10, Section 1, Part 3, Molar Mass. So pause the video, fill in the blanks, play to hear my words, and make sure that you're reading as you're writing. So what is molar mass or formula mass? Formula mass actually sounds more like the definition. It's the mass of the formula. That substance can either be an element or a compound. So when we know the formula mass of something, the mass of our substance, really we're talking about one mole of that substance. So that's why sometimes you see grams per mole and sometimes you see atomic mass unit. For our purposes, the grams per mole is going to be more important because once we understand how to figure out the formula mass, it really represents the molar mass because it represents that mass in one mole. Aha! And now we're going to be able to use this molar mass in a conversion between grams of something to moles of something. So this section is just dealing with the molar mass. How do we find the mass of our substance? So, how would we find the mass of an element? So, if we're scratching our head, we're going, hmm, we're probably going to use the periodic table, right? And if we talk, look at that periodic table and different elements, the mass on the periodic table of that element really represents how many grams we would have to mass out in order to get one mole of that substance. So, for instance, if you look at carbon on your periodic table, you would need 12 grams uh, would equal one mole of those carbon atoms. Uh, for sulfur, you would need 32.1 grams of sulfur in order to have one mole of those sulfur atoms. And then here's mercury. Remember, mercury is the liquid um, uh, metal at room temperature. And here we have some iron. So I like this picture as well because it shows you the inside. What do those atoms really look like on the inside of those solids? Uh, and liquid, right? Mercury is a liquid. So anyways, we're going to need the mass of uh, those elements. So right now you should have out your ion periodic table because we're going to do names when we get to the practice problems. Your real periodic table that I gave you uh, previously that has the atomic number and the atomic mass because we're going to need the masses uh, for our formulas. And then of course the calculator because we're going to add things up eventually. So hopefully you paused, you got all that information, and now let's look at these examples. So can you find K, M, N, and O? These are three elements. How do I know that? Well, I see them having one capital letter in each of the formulas. So I know that I'm talking about atoms. So remember we talked about particles, and because I'm talking about elements, I'm really talking about atoms. I will tell you that I usually round to two decimal places. So if you're looking at your periodic table, some masses give you two decimal places, some give you three, some even give you four. I usually just round to the second decimal place. So hopefully you found potassium. K is for potassium, and I got 31.10 grams per mole. That would be rounding that mass on your periodic table to two decimal places. Remember, decimal places is just two numbers after the decimal point. MN is manganese, and that's 54.94 on that periodic table of yours. And O is for oxygen, and I'm going to give that a 16.00. So make sure to pause, and I believe there's a spot in your notes to fill this out. Okay, so the mass of an element is pretty easy to figure out. I'm going to look at that periodic table, and however many uh, mass, the grams that are on my periodic table, that's how much I would have to mass out to get one mole of that element. But how would we find the mass of a compound? Hmm, so if you think about this, a compound is going to be a combination of elements. We're going to have more than one. We're going to see more than one capital letter, and we're either going to be talking about a molecule or a formula unit. Well, I got to really just add up all the masses, right? That should make sense. If I need the mass of water, let's say H2O, just like he did on that Bozeman science video, did he not take two hydrogen masses and one oxygen mass and add them all up? That's basically what he did. So again, 
Let's look at this example, and this might be one you want to wait to hear the whole thing and then pause and write it in. If I want the mass of this particular ionic compound, so I want the mass of these, this formula unit, I'm going to take how many I have of K times its mass, how many I have of manganese times its mass, and how many I have of oxygens times its mass. So according to this, I have 1K, I have 1 MN, and I have 4 oxygens. So hopefully we can fill in the blanks here and do the math. So pause and make sure to get that information in. Now, these are going to be the masses, individual elements in my compound. So how am I going to get then the mass of the entire compound? You got it. I'm just going to add up those numbers. So I'm going to take those three numbers and add them up. So pause, do that on your calculator, and what do you get as an answer? Hopefully you did the math, you added them all up, and now I gave you three different ways of giving the answer unit, right? The answer is all the same, 158.04, but what I did was I said, well, we can talk about it as grams in one mole. Grams per mole is really what we're going to be using, and of course, sometimes you'll see AMU uh, just signifying atomic mass unit. But they all mean the same thing. It's all the same unit. Uh, but again, we'll do grams per mole most often because that's what's going to help us use be used as a conversion later on. All right, so example number two, find the molar mass of, ooh, phosphorus trichloride. So if you notice, the first thing we need is the formula of the substance. We can't do anything without a formula because we need to know how many of each element is in my formula, whether that be an atom, an ion, a molecule, or a formula unit. Now in this case, since it starts with phosphorus, it's going to be a molecule. So can you scratch your head? You don't even need your ion sheet for this, right? This is, this is one that you're going to just use those prefixes to help you how many of each. Hopefully in your head you're thinking, oh, phosphorus one and trichloride would be three chlorines. All right, so now we can calculate the mm. Notice that's an abbreviation for molar mass. So what are we going to do here? I have one P times its mass, and I have three CLs times its mass. So hopefully you're understanding where I'm getting how many of each element in my compound, and I'm finding my masses of the individual elements on my real periodic table. All right, so from that, well, again, those are the masses of the individual elements, but I want the mass of the whole compound. What am I going to do those two numbers? You got it. Add them up. So again, pause, see if you can do the mathematics. Hopefully you paused and got an answer of 137.33 grams per mole, and that's how we write grams per mole, G slash M-O-L. All right, number th now before we do number three, this one's a little trickier. First, we need to figure out how many of each element is in this compound. Now, why is it tricky? These gosh darn parentheses. So again, just listen first, and then you can pause and make any notations on your uh, margins in your packet. All right, so if we look at Al, which is aluminum, there's two of them. That's actually pretty easy, right? You can kind of look there and say, yeah, I got two. But if we're looking at this guy, we have two elements here. We have sulfur and the oxygen. And we have parentheses. So technically, this three goes with the sulfur. So I really have three sulfurs. But this three also is going to go with the oxygen. And three times four gives me 12 oxygens. So at this point, you might want to pause, maybe rewind, maybe re-listen to that, but make sure you're understanding how those parentheses work and how we're getting how many of each element in this compound. And you might want to, again, you might want to jot that down, maybe making yourself some arrows to make sure you're understanding that that three goes with the sulfur and it goes with the oxygen and we're multiplying it out. All right, so hopefully at this point, you're having that better understanding of how to find how many of each element in that compound. So now I can ask you the formula mass. So I asked you for mass, 
molar mass and formula mass. It all means the same thing. But again, we need the formula of the substance and hint, 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 I just gave it to you last time, right? That's one of the reasons why I wanted to make sure we know how many of each substance we have. So again, we have two aluminums, we have three sulfurs, and we have 12 oxygens. There's our masses if you look on your periodic table. So why don't you pause the video, find those individual masses, and then add them up to get the final answer. Hopefully you got these as your answers, individual elements, and when you add them all up, you should get that. So either you did it step by step, or you did the whole thing. Overall, hopefully you got the 342.17 grams per mole. And what does this really mean? This means that if I want a mole of this aluminum sulfate, I would need to mass out 342.17 grams. And again, we're going to use this grams per mole hmm, as a conversion later on. So if we look at all these, these are all compounds. And again, they're showing how much mass I would have to mass out in order to get one mole of sugar, one mole of mothballs, and one mole of water. So one molar mass is shown for each of these three molecular compounds. How can you know they are each containing Avogadro's number of molecules? Hmm, well, if I told you that they're all one mole, one mole equals... Avogadro's number of particles, and in this case, those particles are molecules, okay? So again, there's going to be this relationship between grams and moles and Avogadro's number. All right, so practice problems. There's a chart, correct? And I want to know the mass of one mole of the following compounds, but also give the name, and I shouldn't say compounds because I see C for carbon, and that would be an atom. All right, so I need the formula mass uh, for all of these and try to give it the name. And that's why I had you uh, take out your ionic uh, periodic table as well. So pause the video. Uh, if you need to show your work uh, for yourself, that's fine. You can either do that in the margins or in a scrap sheet of paper or where you put the bookwork. Uh, but I just need the answers. So hopefully at this point you pause the video, you did at least, um, actually you should have done them all because right now I'm just going to show you the chart that's all filled in. Uh, so hopefully you got these as an answer. So pause and double check your work. So one thing to look at is number one, I went to two decimal places. The other thing is all the units are grams per mole and of course your names. Make sure that the names are as is otherwise it is wrong okay so make sure that those all match up and again if you're having trouble or not understanding where these numbers come from or if you're slightly off uh, you might want to touch base with me or somebody else in class one day soon all right so let's see if we can do a little bit of quiz I believe there's three questions here uh, but it deals all of this section so pause read and can you answer Hopefully you got that. That was in the very, very beginning when we talked about the paint and the bird seed and the nails. Number two, again, pause and make sure we're understanding this. Again, this is really just talking about the, um, the terminology when we're dealing with particles, right? Are we talking about an atom? Are we talking about an ion? Are we talking about molecules? Or are we talking about formula units? And again, because we have two H's here, this is a diatomic molecule. That's why you learned those uh, previously. And number three, again, this says atomic mass of fluorine. And we have to be specific that it's the atomic mass and not that diatomic molecule. Because again, he's part of Cliff H. Braun. All right, pause and see if you can come up with an answer. Hopefully you came up with that. And again, I'm going to say that if you did grams, um, uh, AM, you remember, already takes into consideration the grams per mole. And that's why this says um, if the atomic mass is this, the molar mass must be, again, grams in one mole. And you wouldn't choose AMU for that. And so can you figure out the molar mass of ammonium nitrate? Hmm, you probably need the formula. So pause. Use your ion uh, periodic table to come up with the formula, and then you can figure out the molar mass. Hopefully you paused, you came up with the formula, and came up with B as an answer. All right, guys, we will see you in class. And this is an old, old-fashioned typewriter. I thought this was pretty cool.